The preference of the Art Commission for suspension bridges was a major dilemma for the county. The earlier bridges designed by Roebling and Re Lindenthal had experienced anchorage problems with respect to the soils along the riverbanks. There had been signs of slippage of the tiebacks, and component rock was located about 60 feet below the stream bed. Also, more, t more, more importantly, because of the presence of railroad tracks on, on the north side and plans for a future 10th Street bypass, there was no room to install the big anchorage vaults that were typically used to restrain the large tensile forces in the main suspender cables. So the design problem at hand was what to do next. One thing they might have done is refer to the publication you see in this photo. This book by Holwyn Kinney was published in 1923 and features a collection of essays by several distinguished experts. Here is a list of the editorial staff. Note the last name listed, D.B. Steinman. David Steinman had published a treatise on suspension bridges a year earlier, and some of his material was included in Chapter 6 of this book and may have been familiar to the county engineers. If you turn to Chapter 6, note the bridge in Figure 26. This was the Cologne Chain Bridge. It was built in 1915 and crossed the Rhine River in Germany. Here is a better look at the Cologne Chain Bridge. This became known as a self-anchored suspension bridge. In this type of bridge, the main cables attached at the ends of the deck rather than to the ground via large anchorages. This type of bridge happens to be well suited for construction atop elevated piers or in areas of unstable soils where anchorages would be difficult to construct. This photo shows the beginning of Mr. Steinman's chapter on suspension bridges. The main premise of suspension bridge design is that the cable shape is assumed to be parabolic. This page indicates some of the assumptions used. Also, on the left page, near the top, the various types of suspension bridges are classified according to the number of hinges used in the stiffening girders. There is also a reference to a figure 14 that appears in this chapter. This image shows the derivation of a number of equations. Using basic elastic theory, you can calculate the moments, shears, tension in the cables, forces in the tower, and other things like cable length and deformation due to temperature stress for the various bridge components. Finally, here is figure 14 as referenced earlier. You will note that there is a negative moment region in the anchorage span on the left side of the continuous beam, which indicates an uplift condition at that support. This must be dealt with during construction. Armed with their knowledge of the self-anchored suspension bridge and elastic theory equations, the county completed preliminary designs and had their architects produce this rendering for a revised design concept for approval by the Art Commission. This time all three bridges would be identical, hence the term Three Sister Bridges ensued. This newspaper clipping was from November 14, 1925. This is an aerial photo of the point from 1924. On the Allegheny River, from left to right is the old Manchester Bridge, then Theodore Cooper's 6th Street Bridge. But notice the 7th Street Bridge is missing. Ferris's 9th Street Bridge is still there. Recall the War Department opinion from 1917 that required immediate response by the county? A number of years had passed, but the county had appeased the War Department and bought some time by going ahead and removing Lindenthal's 7th Street Bridge while they worked on getting the various design approvals. The county finally received approval from all parties, including the Art Commission. Since the self-anchored bridge appeared to be the only and best solution, the idea of making all three bridges the same design type appealed to the county. The three sister bridges would not only be an aesthetic attraction, but they would also benefit by having an economy of scale if only one contractor built all three structures. This is a copy of an article in the Engineering News Record magazine from September 23, 1926. The author was V.D. Covell, chief engineer of the county's Bureau of Bridges. In the article, Mr. Covell explained some of the design features of the new 7th Street Bridge and illustrated some of the unique construction techniques that were used by the contractor. From the article, here is a photo dated July 21, 1926. The new 7th Street Bridge had been thrown open to traffic, as they used to say, and the new 9th Street Bridge was under construction. 
Here is an erection photo of the 7th Street Bridge taken the previous year. You can see a crane at the end of the cantilever lifting material from a barge located below in the river. Most of the fabricated components used to erect the bridges for the project were shipped to the site via barges and hoisted up in this fashion. This figure from the magazine article indicates several design features. You have the general span arrangement and typical cross sections. On the left side is the unique stiffening girder with three vertical web plates. There is a tall central web and shorter webs that help to support the roadway curbs and the cantilevered sidewalks. This is the erection diagram. The contractor was the American Bridge Company. American Bridge used cantilever construction method with jacks and a series of temporary diagonal struts between the chain and the stiffening girders. The work advanced from each end of the bridge towards the middle. This image is an excerpt taken from the historic American engineering record document that was compiled by staff in 1998 for the three sister bridges. See the force diagram on the right side. Note the eye bar chain is in tension while the towers and stiffening girders are in compression. This is another image from that document. And it, and it illustrates how the I-bar chain is connected by steel pins at the panel points. The I-bars were cut from heat-treated steel plates and are 14 inches wide and vary from 1.5 to 2 inches in thickness. This is the stress sheet for the suspended spans. I know it's a little hard to read, but I just wanted to show how the designers meticulously calculated the bridge quantities, the dead and live loads, and came up with section properties, forces, and allowable stress calculations in order to safely design the structures. Next is the I-bar packing sheet. This shows how the plates fit together from each direction at the panel points. There are four different plate thicknesses, including 3 8 and 5 8 inch filler plates at each joint. And finally, the camber diagram for the suspension chain to account for a 40 degree temperature change. Next, we have a series of construction photos of the 6th Street Bridge. These were actual photos from our archives. First, they had to remove the old 6th Street Bridge, the Pennsylvania Trust that was designed by Theodore Cooper. The county had kept 6th Street open as long as possible until 7th and 9th were open to traffic. But since it was still relatively young, the two main spans were lowered onto barges and floated down the Ohio River to Coriopolis for adaptive reuse. The spans were reused to connect the downstream end of Neville Island to Route 51 in Coriopolis over the Ohio River back channel. This photo from April 1928 shows the approach spans on the downtown end of the bridge. In this photo from May 1928, the approach span on the north side is making progress and both towers are up. The floor system is being supported by steel bents on wooden piles driven in the riverbed. By June of 1928, erection is advancing from the downtown side. This photo from July 8, 1928 shows one looking downstream. The stiffening girders have been closed. And finally, by November 6, 1928, this view is looking upstream and the three sister bridges are finally in place. There was great cause for celebration. They had a small parade to officially dedicate the bridge. Here are the group of public officials making a speech. This group included the county commissioners, the mayor, and other dignitaries. The 6th Street Bridge received the Most Beautiful Steel Bridge Award for 1928 from the American Institute of Steel Construction. This is the cover of the actual program that was circulated for the event. This photo was taken in the county courthouse in the Gold Room of the unveiling ceremony of the Bronze Award plaque on December 4, 1929. And here is the AISC award plaque for the most beautiful steel bridge. It is presently located on the southeast pylon of the bridge. This photo shows the old tie down at 7th Street at the north end. Note the single pin holding the mechanism in place. There are tie down systems at each end of the bridge holding down the ends of the stiffening girders. These are designed to restrain a large uplift force. There are four sets of these per bridge, one at each corner. This is the new tie-down at the 7th Street Bridge on the north end. Due to de deterioration over the years, the original tie-downs had to be rebuilt with supplemental reinforcement and rock anchors added into the pier stem below. Note that the two shorter pins were used instead of one long pin. Finally, the last photo I have in this segment is this one, which shows the temporary tie-down restraint system used by the contractor. This was intended to keep the end of the anchor spin in place until the supplemental reinforcement in the tie-down system below became effective. 